Hi guys, my name is Courtney. I wanted to give you a quick run through of the game Brave Story. I know it's an older game, but I'm just getting around to playing it now because um, I just, when I had my daughter, I didn't have time to really game. So I'm just getting back into it for the past couple years. And um, I actually found a PSP. It was thrown away in the trash at a storage place that we were going, that we were using. And I went up, they, they just left piles of stuff um, over there. So I decided to look through it. It was a lot of actually decent stuff. But I found a pretty badly damaged PSP. But I thought it might be fixable. I mean, you know, finding any kind of game console in the trash, that's a big score. So I took it and then I kept digging and I actually found a game for it. Um, I found Coded Arms, not not my favorite game, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but um, I brought the PSP home, there was no battery, no charger, so I had to order those, and uh, once I finally was able to get that and test it out and figure out what was wrong with it, um, basically the, the um, door on the back for um, the games was broken off the hinge on the bottom so it was just sort of sticking out um, the games couldn't really play in it I tried velcroing it at first but it just didn't really work it was too hard to get the games in and out and um, to use it the way that I really needed to so basically from there I got all the parts I needed I fixed it up and uh, now I have a cute little pink PSP which if you are on my Instagram you would have seen that already um, it has some glitches here and there, um, the analog stick has some trouble and the internet doesn't work on it at all, but other than that, it's great, and I'm actually using it as an emulator, um, for older ROMs and everything, because it doesn't really have much else of a function than that, but I am hoping to get the PS Vita pretty soon. Anyway, that's just a little bit of a backstory about me and my recent gaming, um, I also do a lot of gaming on PS4. I do Fallout and um, Mad Max. I play mostly. Um, Fallout 4, I mean, I've invested probably over 200 um, hours into Fallout 4. But that being said, the story I feel is lacking a bit. Um, I did get Nuka Cola World and I finally was able to get Far Harbor. And those do add to the story, but Nuka Cola World, I pretty much beat the whole DLC uh, maybe in a week or two. And uh, once, you know, there's other stuff to do in the DLC, but once that kind of storyline was over, it was kind of like, okay, where do you go from here? So, um, but that's still pretty much my favorite game, so I can't complain too much. And I um, actually like to do glitch reels from that, so I'm hoping to eventually do videos of all of that as well. I have a lot of um, a lot of Fallout 4 uh, footage, but a lot of people have done Fallout 4, so that's why I never really got around to going through my endless amounts of uh, videos that I had taken and put anything together yet. Uh, I thought I'd start smaller with this. Um, this is Brave Story. It's... Um, I don't know, I mean, it's it's sort of an anime, but um, basically the way that it starts off is you're at the park with your friend and you have a dog there with you and your character, you get to name your character, you can choose whatever name you want, um, your character is a hardcore gamer, has their handheld console with them, um, not really paying attention to the world around him, not really doing much of anything just playing the game and his friend is sitting there and you know she's kind of like hello i'm trying to talk to you don't don't you want to go do something you said you would come walk the dog with me and all of this and your character is just oblivious not paying attention at all and i didn't get the footage of this or the pictures of this but basically the dog runs away and your friend decides to you know the friend runs off to go find the dog and you're still you know into your game you're not paying attention so suddenly um, the dog comes back and starts barking at you and your friend isn't there with the dog so you finally put your console away and you're like 
what's going on? So you run off to look for your friend, and unfortunately, sorry, I had to get a sip of water. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, your friend is laying on the ground. Uh, she looks unconscious, unresponsive, and it's kind of like, okay, what happened? This is weird. Um, you also start to see a frog appear um, in a lot of the screen shots. So don't really know what the frog story is yet. I, I actually just started the game. I haven't gotten very far into it yet. Um, it was actually recommended by Metal Jesus, if you follow him. If you don't, check him out. Um, his show is pretty cool, and he has a lot of cool people that come on his show. Um, great recommendations. Um, he was like into PC gaming. Uh, maybe before it was really a thing. I'm not sure, but yeah, he's he knows you know a lot about a lot of the old school PC gaming, and um, he has a huge collection, and all of his friends like also have huge collections. So yeah, if you don't follow him, you should check him out. But he recommended this game um, in his PSP uh, best games video. So I decided to try it out. And it's pretty cool so far. I mean, it doesn't really give you too much of a story at the beginning, but you know that something's going on with your friend. And it's kind of sad because suddenly, you know, your friend is in the hospital, and you walk up to visit, and you hear through the door, the doctor is telling the mom and the dad, you know, we're sorry, but we can't figure out what's wrong with your daughter there's no medical explanation for what's wrong with her and we can't help her and the mom is saying you know it's kinda this this got me when I read it because I have an eight-year-old daughter so um, it kinda tugged at my heartstrings the mom says but you know she's gonna wake up right she's gonna say mommy you know hi daddy hi and um the doctor says you know simply I don't know and you're standing out there listening to this, and then suddenly the mom just starts kind of breakdowns and screams, No, Yuki, you know, my daughter, is she going to be okay? And the mom is very upset, and then they kind of show Yuki. And then the next thing you know, your character is running upstairs to the roof of the hospital. He's very upset, because um, he doesn't know if his friend is going to be okay. And he probably feels a little bit guilty that, you know, he wasn't paying attention to his friend when this happened. So, basically, he kind of falls down on the uh, roof of the hospital. He's very upset. And he, you know, he drops his game console and he's kind of looking at it. And then, suddenly, there's this frog behind him. And in a female voice, you assume it's the frog talking to him. But um, he never acknowledges that the frog is there. And the frog is kind of like, you know, if you want to help your friend... Um, you need to get up and you need to go do something about it. In other words, this game I think is kind of like get out and do something with your life. Go outside and do things or go explore and be adventurous. That sort of um, thing. But basically your friend suddenly becomes the kind of hero of the story and he has to go and battle all these things to figure out what's going on. So he has a necklace all of a sudden that sort of appears around his neck and it's actually a traveler's necklace so he needs that in order to be able to um, get back and forth um, I'm gonna look real quick so I can see um, trying to remember what the necklace is called uh, so Yeah, I thought they said what it was called, but I, I don't have that, <laughs> sorry. But, um, oh, he says, uh, oh, he, the, um, basically when you first go through, you go through this big portal that appears on the roof of the hospital, you walk through it, and the frog goes through first, so there's something about the frog, and you wind up at this cabin in the woods, and um, all these little birds are like hopping around giving you information about the game basically and what you need to do and um, 
the name of the person that owns the cottage is Wayfinder, Wayfinder Lau, I want to say. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it 100% correct. But um, you're at the cottage and you get something out of the... Um, out of a pot it's like berries I think that you can eat um, and then basically the birds are like you need to go and um, do this mission so you leave and you start walking out and you're just kind of on a big map but you can only go to one other place on the map at this point and this it's like a cave but it actually looks like a giant eyeball with like vines growing all over it and I thought it looked really cool so right off the bat that's pretty neat and then um, I have a screenshot of the map to show you what the whole world looks like and you're just in this one little section um, sort of on the bottom of the world to begin with so basically from there you go into the cave and there are these four guardians um, huge like statues but they are talking to you and moving and it's really cool um, I really liked the statues so I got pictures of each of these characters um, the first guy says he's the dawn guardian and um, he's the goddess of destiny basically each of these statues asks you would you rather this or this and um, you know you're given a choice basically like the one screenshot I got says a resistant body or a resistant mind and so you get to choose which one you prefer and um, after all of that basically it's granted to you um, the Sun Guardian says then it, then a resistant body you shall have and um, she's pretty cool it's like this huge woman statue with a cape and a um, bow like a huge bow and arrow and um, yeah I really liked that character then um, I did get a little video to kind of give you an idea of the actual gameplay. So they ask you if you're satisfied with your choices. You can decide if you want to change it, I guess, or if you are happy with it. Um, and from there, they basically say you're going to be faced with a lot of challenges and you got to overcome them all. So that's what you do. And then you go through these little doors that open. And basically, um, from there you, f you meet Wayfinder Lau, he's in the um, cave that you go into. And he gives you, um, here's some screenshots just, just of the statues to give you an idea of what they look like and um, kind of, you know, how interesting they are. I wanted to get a good front up, you know, screenshot of each of these, but this game does not allow for um, moving the camera, unfortunately it's a top-down game um, so you know you're just kind of looking from the ceiling and playing and you can't reach every thing which is kind of upsetting because the game actually looks really nice I mean if you see Wayfinder Lau here I think he looks pretty cool um, and this is PSP so uh, I think they did a really good job with it here's your traveler's necklace and it's pretty cool um, I wanted to get a close-up of it because it actually has these cool designs on each of the um, little squares on the necklace itself and then the the um, medallion sort of that's hanging down is really cool I don't know what any of these symbols mean or if they actually mean anything if they're just made up for the game but next thing you know you have a full um, suit of armor you know kind of basic suit of armor and you have this huge sword it's like oh, okay this is really cool um, and it's a really neat looking outfit and sword and um, you kind of point it toward the wayfinder which I thought was a little a little strange to go into that stance but he's just kind of testing the sword out like oh this is cool never had a sword before he's pretty excited I think so then you're given these two objects um, you have like a round blue object and a sort of diamond shaped green object and basically these each have a purpose um, the round blue orb is actually a save point so if you see those throughout the game you can save it and the green um, diamond like um, object is actually to restore your health so that's pretty cool so if you see those throughout the game you want to make sure that you get them this is an actual screenshot of gameplay so this is what it looks like when you're playing.
pretty cool graphics for you know PSP. I thought that was pretty nice. Then this is um, one of the little birds actually giving you information, and they keep giving you these riddles and basically say, oh, you have to solve it. You're never going to solve it. Um, spoiler alert: the first one wasn't that hard to figure out. Um, I don't know if it's going to get harder as the game goes on, but it was. You know, you go and I'll let you see what you got to do. Um, I won't give that away. But anyway, here's um, the sword. And I I thought it looked really cool, so I wanted to get some close-ups of it. Um, basically, he says there are five holes in the, so in the guard of the sword, and you need to fill them with gemstones. And basically, when you fill them with gemstones, your sword is going to evolve. And it's going to be called the Demon's Bane. Uh, totally awesome. Can't wait for that. And then he says, um, now, only the demon's bane can open the way to the Tower of Destiny and the Goddess. So apparently that's where you're trying to get to. And by earning the gemstones, you'll have access, and then I guess you can help your friend at the end of the story. So, um, that's as far as I've gotten so far. Just wanted to kind of give a quick, um, video review for what I thought about this game. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really excited to get into it deeper. And um, I think the graphics are pretty great. I wish you could move around a little bit more and have first person view. Um, like Kingdom Hearts, they were able to do that. Coat of Arms even was able to do that. But Coat of Arms was really bland to me. I didn't really appreciate the, um, the artwork. But at the same time, Coat of Arms was said to have been basically the first game for PSP that used first person shooting. Um, and that they figured out that you could do that. So... Um, you may want to check it out just for that or just to own it for that. So I thought it was pretty cool that I got that for free. I don't know if I would have bought it, but to have it and it be one of the first um, original games that led to first person views on the PSP. Yeah, I mean, you got to give them some credit there. That's really cool. And I mean, the game isn't horrible. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it can be a little tricky at times, but it's not impossible. Um, to get through, but like I said, it's just the graphics are kind of lacking for me, and I like something a little bit more visually pleasing when I play a game. So um, there's my first views on Brave Story and getting letting you get to know me a little bit. I'm gonna start trying to do these. I got um, stuff from Kingdom Hearts, uh, stuff from Marvel Alliance that's really cool, and um, you know, hopefully, eventually, I'll also do Fallout 4 and Mad Max. I have a lot of stuff from both of those. Um, and we'll go from there. So, nice to meet you. My name is Courtney. Uh, you can look me up on Instagram, at Milady Memorabilia. Um, alright. I hope to see you soon. Um, I guess like and subscribe if you like the videos. Uh, that way I know people are watching so I can continue making them. Alright, thanks. Y'all have a great day. Bye.